be at Camp Mental Land, mm -hmm. and I'm happy to see each one of you here today. Visitors, we're happy to have you, and those of you who are our regular folks, we're happy to have you also. We don't take you for granted. We're glad to see you all. Welcome, Ben. Anybody else come from afar? <laughs> he comes from Doylestown. It's not that far. All right. Uh, time for some announcements. Um, the announcements are in the update that came on Friday, but if you didn't have time to look at it, be sure and read the um, announcements. There are some reminders here for each one of us. Um, telling us that the camp store is available uh, if you want to buy some of those little goodies like mugs and sweatshirts and things like that, those essentials. There are fish in the lake, we're promised. So if you brought your fishing rod, uh -huh. <laughs> you can go and fish. And if not, you can just sit and watch and the boats are available so you can go boating. And uh, the pool will be open at one o'clock so that you can go and use the pool. Um, use the camp for just enjoying God's nature and your time to be outdoors. You can walk around, you can, but just don't get lost. We don't have anybody to come get you. Um, the service will be taped for you and uh, we'll let you know when it's available, right? Yep. Sylvia, do you want to talk about school kits? That's our number one project right now, and we'd like to wind it, get, wind it up. Okay. Um, we're having uh, a work night at 6.30 on this coming Tuesday. Um, everyone is invited. We're hopefully going to be able to roll straight through. We have some sorting, packing. We're at all different stages, so we should be able to start um, packing to put into boxes and, um, and, but we still are back at the other end, sorting the notebooks okay. to get them into the bags to pick up to go to put everything else in. Um, some other things will need to be pulled apart to put in the boxes to grab from. Um, but we have enough to get started and by the end of the evening, hopefully we will be to the point where everything is out and where it needs to be and half of it will be packed. That's my goal for that night. We'll see. So if you can join us, please do. And your newsletter says that we need people to transport them down to the Mennonite Resource Center. Um, Carol is one of the people that has said yes. I don't know if anybody else has yet. If we need two people, if we, we definitely can use two people. The boxes get kind of heavy. And it's nice to have help. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? Special welcome to Juan's family. Thank Part you. of it that's here that we're happy to have you. Be sure and talk to them, make them feel at home. <laughs> okay, uh, Meg is going to lead us in our songs and they are listed on your program. And the numbers are there. They're all in the yellow book. So if you need a yellow book and don't have it. Anybody need one? Raise your hand if you need a book. If you know all the songs without, that's okay too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's good. Brought you on all right, the first song, What a Mighty God We Serve. We're gonna sing it through twice. And we'll uh, try to do it a little with a little spirit here. <laughs> I don't have a pitch pipe. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> your mother. <laughs> She's, well, I don't know if she can give us all of them. I just pick a note, the rest of you are on your own. <laughs> all right, everybody ready? Here we go. What a mighty God we serve. Number two. 
turn. Stand up. You can stand, stand up if you wish. If you're if you're able. Thank you, Ruth. <laughs> All right, the next one is a gather tune. I'm not sure the gathers did anything real quickly. So we'll slow it down just a little bit. Um, this, the entire song is all on this one. We'll sing it through three times. You'll see uh, on line two and line five, we have our alternate words. So hands, voice, heart. All right. Let's do Let your praise the Lord. Okay, that's our tempo. Let's just praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's just lift our hands toward heaven and praise the Lord. Let's just praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's just lift our hands toward heaven and praise the Lord. Lower tempo on this one. Praise the name. All right. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. In him will I trust. Praise the
four. We'll sing it through two times. Merciful and loving God, <clears throat> even as our Lord needed times alone, mm -hmm. so we need this time away from work and busyness. Yes. We want you to be we want to be vividly aware of your presence this morning. And we want to become more conscious of your power. We need to sense your protection and we desire to know more fully the wonder of your presence. Mm -hmm. Lead us, Lord, in our worship today, that our lips might praise you, our lives might bless you, and our thoughts might glorify your name. We come to sing and to pray, knowing that you always hear us. Help us to hear you in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, your responsive reading is in the bulletin. I will do the leader's part, and you are the people, if you doubt it. And this is from Psalm, yeah, it's not listed, I forget which one. Anyway, it's from a psalm. Psalm 14. I think you're right. <laughs> the fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. Their deeds are vile. There is no one who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on the sons of men to see if there are anyone who understand any who seek of God. All have turned aside. They have together become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even me. Will evil will evildoers never learn? Those who devour my people as men who bread and who do not call on the name of the Lord? There they are, overwhelmed with dread, for God is present in the company of the righteous. You evildoers frustrate the plans of the poor, but the Lord is their refuge. When the Lord restores the fortunes of his people, let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. There is it, Psalm 14. <laughs> All right. Um, the offering plate is in, or basket is in the back today. Again, if you have an offering that you want to put in, you can do it after the, after our service. If you need to send it, um, you know where to see that it can go. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for gifts that belong not to us alone, but to all our sisters and brothers, since they too are created in your image. Let their need become our need, let their hunger become our hunger, and grant to us also a portion of their pain, so that in sharing ourselves, 
we discover the Christ who walks with our brothers and sisters. Amen. Okay, let's do He is Lord, number 23 in your yellow book. And if you're able, please stand. <laughs> All four verses. He is our starting note. <laughs> <laughs> he is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess. The scripture this morning is found in 2 Samuel, verses 1 to 17. I think most of us, when we think of King David, we think about killing Goliath, or we think about him being crowned king, or some of the better parts of his life. Just like the rest of us, we all have two sides to us, and we have the good things we do, but we also have a dark side that we don't like to have other people know about. And this is a good, this is a prime case of somebody who tried to hide what should never have happened in the first place. So, this is this great story in Second Samuel chapter 11, and here we go. In the spring, at the time when kings go off to war, David sent Joab out with the king's men and the whole Israelite army. They, they destroyed the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah, but David remained in Jerusalem. One evening, David got up from his bed and walked around on the roof of the palace. And from the roof, he saw a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful, and David sent someone to find out about her. And the man said, Isn't this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, and the wife of Uriah the Hittite? Then David sent messengers to get her. She came to him, and he slept with her. She had purified herself from her uncleanness. And then she went back home. The woman conceived and sent word to David saying, I'm pregnant. So David sent this word to Joab, send me Uriah the Hittite. 
and Joab sent him to David. When Uriah came to him, David asked him how Joab was, how the soldiers were, and how the war was going. Then David said to Uriah, go down to your house and wash your feet. So Uriah left the palace and a gift from the king was sent with him. But Uriah slept at the entrance to the palace with all his master's servants and did not go down to his house. When David was told Uriah did not go home, he asked him, haven't you just come from a distance? Why didn't you go home? Uriah said to David, the ark and the ark and Israel and Judah are staying in tents. And my master Joab and my Lord's men are camped in open fields. How could I go to my house to eat and drink and lie with my wife? As surely as you live, I will not do such a thing. Then David said to him, stay here one more day and tomorrow I will send you back. So Uriah remained in Jerusalem that day and the next. At David's invitation, he ate and drank with him and David made him drunk. But in the evening, Uriah went out to sleep on his mat among his master's servants and he did not go home. In the morning, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it with Uriah. And in it he wrote, put Uriah in the front line where the fighting is fiercest and then withdraw from him so he will be struck down and die. So while Joab had the city under siege, he put Uriah at a place where he knew the strongest defenders were. And when the men of the city came out and fought against Joab, some of the men in David's army fell. Moreover, Uriah the Hittite died. We'll use for a subject preaching a few minutes. An indecent proposal. An indecent proposal. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for the spirit of praise and worship that we feel this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your creation and your nature, which declares your glory every day it pours out speech. We thank you for Upper Milford Mennonite Church. We thank you for your word. Heavenly Father, Lord, I've studied, but I still need your strength. I've prepared, but I need your power. Anoint these lips of clay to speak as your mouthpiece. Hide me behind your cross. Allow me to decrease, but you to increase, Father God, not only in my preaching, but in my everyday life. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. The name David means beloved of God. This was true despite David's humble beginnings as the least in Jesse's house and the shepherd of his few sheep. Through his training and development, he learned how to protect these sheep from wild animals. And he learned how to proclaim that the Lord was his shepherd. He should not want. David, David, the sweet psalmist of Israel, who the scriptures proclaim in 1 Samuel 13, 14. The Lord sought for himself a man after God's own heart. David attested to this by proclaiming in Psalm 18, 2. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. My shield and the horn of my salvation and my stronghold. But it was at the time of this scripture that we read today that David needed to use these righteous weapons and these righteous sayings of Yahweh to protect him in the midst of his temptation. It was at this moment that David needed Yahweh the Lord to be his fortress in the midst of the attack from the enemy. It was at this moment that David who proclaimed that the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? It was at this moment that David needed this heavenly courage to resist this satanic temptation. At this moment of trial, David needed to display the kind of godly courage he used when he was obedient to the voice of the Lord and slay Goliath with a slingshot and a smooth stone. But at this vulnerable moment, 
David, the warrior who killed 200 Philistines, is succumbing to defeat at the hands of the tempter. It's at this vulnerable moment that David, the worshiper, is overwhelmed by the desires of his own flesh. The definition of sin is to miss the mark that God has for us, but also to not share in the prize. David was missing the mark, and there would be no prize for his actions and his failures. This is a sobering passage of Scripture. It's showing us that even those who have been used of God in miraculous ways can still succumb to temptation when they take their eyes off the Lord who placed them in the prominent position in the first place. This is the message I want us to receive today. As believers in Christ, in times of success, blessings, and prosperity, we all the more must remain reverent and worship and diligent in obedience to the Lord who purchased us with his precious blood. Let me say that again. As believers in Christ, in times of success and blessing and prosperity, we all the more must remain reverent in worship and diligent in obedience to the Lord who purchased us with his precious blood. First thing is this. David's success allowed him to put his guard down. Get that. He's at the height of his success. He's the king over a united Israel and Judah. David, who took care of a few sheep. David, who was the least of his household. David, who God used to slay the giant Philistine. At this moment, at the, the, the prominent position that he's in, he lets his guard down. The scripture said in verse 1, In the times when the kings go out to battle, David sent Joab and his servants. He should have been out on the battlefield. He should have been advancing the kingdom of Israel. He should have been conquering the enemies of Yahweh. But no, he's falling back in his success. He's chilling and he's lamping at a time when he should have been on the battlefield. He let his guard down. It's at the, the pinnacle of mountaintop experiences. It's at the pinnacle when we're experiencing life successes. It's at that time when we let our guard down. David should have been on the battlefield. But he sent Joab and he sent his servants. David should have never stopped fighting. Now, I know a little bit about fighting. I know I'm in Upper Milford, but... <laughs> you don't typically put a musician and a fighter together. That just don't go together. You know, mus musicians are usually a little bit... I'll leave it alone, but you know what I mean. They, <laughs> a little eccentric sometimes. A little bit full of themselves. But David could fight... And he could worship. It, 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 it don't typically go together. But that was the anointing that he had on his life. I know some double barrel preachers, we call them. They can preach and sing. I can only preach. I can't sing. <laughs> but some of these double barrel dudes, man, they deal with their own success a lot of times. I mean, they could work. Imagine if I could get up here and really blow some pipes. I mean... You know, it, it, it's just something that, you know, the Lord needs to keep you humble at times. This wonderful warrior, wonderful leader was also a wonderful worshiper. He shouldn't have stopped fighting. He should have never stopped taking territory for the Lord. David should have never stopped worshiping. David became lethargic with power and prosperity. Proverbs 12, 24 says, The hand of the diligent will continue to rule. The old timers used to say, How did they say it? Idle time is the devil's workshop. Idle hands. Idle hands. Help me out, old timers. <laughs> it's truth to that. It's truth when everything's going good, you can allow temptation to come in. David opened himself up for this temptation by not being 
where he should have been fighting the enemies of the Lord. The second thing is this. David, who once understood oppression, marginalization, oppression, he was marginalized in his own house being the youngest child. He was oppressed under King Saul, him trying to be diligent, trying to work under Saul, who was the Lord's chosen. Saul tried to kill him a couple times. He knew what oppression was like, but he allows power to corrupt him to a place where he begins to believe he can get away with anything. But I'm here to tell you, God is always watching and he is always the God of the oppressed. Bathsheba was the daughter of William, one of David's mighty men, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite, one of David's mercenary soldiers. Once it was told to David who she was and who was her husband, this was the way of escape. First Corinthians 10, 13 says, no temptation has overtooken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. Now let me clear the air. Her washing outside was normal in that day. They didn't have indoor plumbing. She was doing what she was supposed to be doing. She was in the place where she was supposed to be. It was the king who wasn't in the right place. But once he was told the scenario, he could have used the tool of endurance, which is the ability to keep striving and to stay focused while going through a time of testing or temptation. The way of escape was provided for him. But he succumbed to the temptation. He had to have her. David, who had plenty of wives and plenty of concubines, David, who in that day and in that context, and God don't sanction polygamy, he tolerated polygamy. There's a difference. I can say a whole lot about that. He tolerates some things in Scripture. Don't mean he sanctioned them. Jesus himself said, one man, one woman. I keep it moving. But sin begets sin. Verses 3 to 5, we see what happens. Proverbs 14, 12 to 13 says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. What was the sin to beget sin? The lust of the eyes led to the lust of the flesh, which led to the pride of the heart, and it manifested into adultery, into lying, and ultimately murder. The consequences for these sins are great, and David would have to deal with them. Same way it works today. What gets in your eye gate, tries to get into your heart, it'll lead to a, an action or a manifestation of the sin. And to cover sin, you cover it with more sin. This is a spiral that all of us are not exempt from going down at times. Neither was David. Consequences of these sins. Great. David had to deal with them. But Uriah, wasn't it an Israelite? He wasn't a Hebrew. He wasn't from Judah. He's a Hittite from a pagan nation. He's probably a mercenary. But he shows more honor and godliness than the ruling, reigning king of Israel. What comes to mind when I study this passage? The Good Samaritan. Jesus tells the parable of the Good Samaritan, Samaritan to show the nation of Israel that the person they despised and looked down upon showed more godliness and holiness than a priest or a Levite. Look at Uriah showing more holiness, showing more godliness than the king of Israel, the man that was a man after 
God's own heart. He showed more compassion, more honor to the nation. Watch what he says. David tries to seduce him and get him to go home. But he says, no, the ark and Israel and Judah dwell in booze. And my Lord Joab and the servants of the king are camping in the open field. Shall I then go to my house to eat and drink and lie with my wife? Watch what he says. No, as your servant lives and as your soul lives, I will not do this thing. His godliness and his loyalty gets him killed. You got to look for cruciformity here. Well, the rich you gotta look to Jesus. Get it? His 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 loyalty and his 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 godliness gets him killed. Well, there's somebody else who was loyal to the Father, who was godly. His name is Jesus Christ, and that led him to death on the cross on our behalf. In this context, in this scripture, he's more Christ-like than David. You gotta grapple with that. David, who is a type of Christ. David, who all through his life displayed Christ-like character under the old covenant. A pagan Hittite is more Christ-like in this context than King David. What is God showing us in the scriptures? Don't look down on nobody. Don't overlook nobody. He can use who he wants for his glory. And all through the scripture... Bathsheba is always described as the wife of Uriah. Even though she gave birth to Solomon, she's still the wife of Uriah. This was God's way of giving this man honor for him showing honor to Yahweh. I will not do this thing. The godliness and loyalty to the will of our Heavenly Father got Jesus killed. He too died for rebellious and adulterous people. But his grace and mercy brought salvation to all who would believe. I was trying to pitch Richard softball for next week, but he's using another passage, so I'll go a little deeper. <laughs> David is confronted with his sin by the prophet Tells the story, y'all know it, of a man who took care of a sheep. The sheep was slaughtered to feed and put before guests, and David is outraged. This man should die. This man should be dealt with, and the prophet reveals to him, you are the man. I'm here to tell you, your sin will find you out. You found David out. The blood of Jesus purifies us and washes us from all sin. But the consequences of sin's actions still linger in our lives. And we got to deal with that. Love the blood songs. I believe in it. Shit tell you. <laughs> the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. That has nothing to do with the consequences of your actions. God got all the bases covered. Suffering in David's house remained. Absalom, his son, betrays him. All because of his negative actions which cost him something. But God is a redeemer. That's the good news. He's a redeemer. And even though David sinned with Bathsheba, Solomon would come into the world. Who would be the next king? Wises and riches, whoever lived. Redemption is possible, even after sin's consequences, even after repentance. I'm almost done, but I got to give you this. So what, what, what separated David from Saul and other people? It was his willingness to repent when he was caught in his sin. His sins were great, but David would cry out, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. His pride was set aside. He was willing to go to God and repent for his great sins. 
that's what all of us are called to do when we sin, when we fail God, when we fail each other. Can we honestly go before God and say, Lord, restored me a clean heart, created me a clean heart, restore right spirit within me. God's grace and mercy is available to us. David, though a warrior and a worshiper, was flawed. Uriah, even though he was loyal and godly, he was still flawed. Bathsheba, though she was oppressed and in a dilemma, was flawed. But Jesus, the perfect, sinless Son of God, has purchased salvation for all who will believe. We all make mistakes, but we are not our mistakes. Did you get that? We all make mistakes, but we are not our mistakes as we deal with people coming home from the prison system. As we deal with people in North Philadelphia, we remind them, you made some great mistakes, but you are not your mistake. We have redemption in Christ. I'm closing. But as believers in Christ, in times of success, blessings, and prosperity, we all the more must remain reverent in worship, diligent in obedience to the Lord who purchased us with his precious blood. Amen.
to share her joys and concerns. Do we have any new ones that have any? My wife was able to sit through a service outside even though the spider walked up on her. <laughs> we made it through the message. <laughs> That's what that scream was at then. Oh. <laughs> it wasn't the Holy Spirit. You never know how it comes. <laughs> I would think that he could even work through spiders. Yes, he can. <laughs> but it's a joy to have your family here. Thank you. Yes, it is. Okay. Are there any others? All right, let's come to the Lord in prayer. Listening, God. You hear our prayers before we speak, and yet you welcome our praying. Therefore, we come with confidence to lay our requests before you. We pray for your people everywhere, for those in the Night Church USA, mm -hmm. for Mosaic people, and the people of us who are gathered here and those who are not who belong to the Upper Milford congregation. For faithfulness and strength to persevere in righteousness, we pray for the whole people of God. Lord, just hear our prayers. We pray for the nations of the world, for all leaders, not just those in the U.S., for those who make policy decisions, we pray for the commonwealth of our global society. Lord, just hear our prayers. We read the papers and listen to news, and we are disturbed by what is going on all over the world. We pray for those who are overcome by violence, mm -hmm. for victims of injustice or oppression, and for those in poverty and in pain. We pray for all who need healing and your peace. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are enduring trials, for those who are dying, and for those who mourn. We pray for all who need comfort and your hope. Lord, just hear our prayer. You have heard the prayers of your people, O oh God. We rest in the comfort of your care. And we pray in Jesus' name, who taught us how to pray. Our Father in heaven, holy be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Okay, let's turn to, um, we are doing a, a combination of hymns today. We've done the praise songs, and in the same booklet, believe it or not, we have two very, very favorite hymns of 
most every group of people that we ever sing with, the old rugged cross is always re requested, and we don't sing it very often. Mm. So as we're thinking of David and as we're thinking of ourselves, let's remember the old rugged cross. That's right. Are you going to do the blessing? Yes. Are you going to do it now or are you just going to I guess I'm doing it now. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're right. It is, isn't it? Okay. There is a blessing. Here it is. God is at work in this world. Even in the most barren places, God watches over us and he walks with us. And so is Jesus faced face temptation with the word of God. Let us also face challenges of our own lives with God's word. Go out with the conviction that we do not live by bread alone, but by every word from the mouth of God. Worship, serve the Lord, and go in peace. Amen. Juan will appreciate this. Um, I read a, I'm in the midst of a book by um, Levi Lesko. It's called Taking Back Your Life. And I read a portion of it this week that talked about fighting and boxing. And it talked about jabs and crosses. And so the line to remember is that the jab is the distraction. That's right. The power is in the cross. Come on. Mm -hmm. Come on. I like yeah, that. Name. Oh, she's preaching good. <laughs> <laughs> I try. All right, if you're able, please stand. We'll do all four verses of the old rugged cross. This is where your power lies. On is our start note. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. The emblem of suffering and shame. And I love.
Amen, Lord. As we prepare for lunch, we're going to sing uh, one of the songs that we usually sang as summer staff, and the kids all came along with us. It's Come and Dine. We're going to sing it through twice. Um, the children that have been in my singing group know this, so I hope to hear you loud and clear. All right, so Come and Dine, the Master's Calling, Come and Dine. We will feast at Jesus' table anytime. He has fed the multitude, turned the water into wine. To the hungry calleth now, come and dine. Amen. I think okay. the kids should all come up. All right, children, <laughs> come. <laughs> well, I don't know that they sing this. Really? I don't know. I'm not on no, she said she didn't sing it. You're still singing Come and Dine? All right, good. Good. <laughs> all right, so Rise and Shine we do for breakfast, Come and Dine we do for lunch and dinner, and a couple of others. Okay, you ready? <laughs> Come and dine, the master's calling, come and dine. You may be sent Jesus table any time. He has fed the multitude, and the water and to wine. To the hungry call it now, come and dine. Come and dine, the master's calling, come and dine. You may be sent Jesus table any time. He has fed the multitude, and the water and to Very much. Enjoy camp. What time is lunch? Whenever we get ready.